This is Holy Cross Component 2 Mock and this is Paper 2 and we're on to question 4. And we have got uh, the Pepper Moth, a classic Pepper Moth example. And the colour of the moth is done by a gene that with three alleles and we have the three alleles there. So the alleles that they're given us are um, can you see this where I write? Yes. Uh, we've got C, 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 I, and C, T. And then we've got rules of, of dominance going going that way. And one thing to remember is, although there are three different alleles and Organism, so a moth will have two copies of them, and they could be any of the those three. But we've got two copies because it's diploid. Explain how uh, crosses between insularia moths, those, could produce some insularia and some typica but no carbonaria offspring. Well, if, let's um, give, it's best, best to go, you know, give some examples. If, so always two C's, then I and T. If that, times by another one, oh, I'm so useless. that there, then they could give, if you drew a little, little Punnett square, so if I do that over here, so uh, Punnett square, uh, Punnett square is going to look like this, And then we've got CI, CT, CI, CT. I hate drawing these C's. Two I's, an I and a T, an I and a T, and here we get two T's. And then, following the rules of dominance, these three here would be insularia because they've got the I allele. The insularia. By the way, if you ever draw a Punnett square, you need a key or you need to write it in, or else someone won't know what you're talking about. And this here, T. Typica. So, how could crosses between insularia moths and these are these here are both insularia could produce some insularia and some typica? And actually, the, if you drew and annotated that that diagram and put it in there, then they will give you give you those marks. It says that except as gametes in a, in a genetic diagram. So we could have any of those offspring. And there's marks for assigning the phenotypes to the genotypes. So we could explain this. Um, insularia moths may both have a CT allele and so the offspring might be CT, CT. Um, the second part of this is no carbonaria offspring. Well is there a, can we have a carbonaria 
So, for example, if we had insularity, it's saying it's an insularity moth, but if we had to produce a carbon area, we'd need to have a carbon area in there. If that, then <laughs> parent would be carbon area. So it's impossible. Because any presence of that allele, because it's dominant over the insularia allele, then you'd, you'd see it. So it wouldn't be an insularia moth to begin with. Crosses between carbon area moths could produce offspring of all three phenotypes. Right, okay. Well, you could have... Well, let's, let's do some examples. So if we've got... Let's give a couple of Punnett squares. Let's do one here. So could carbon area moths produce insularia? Well, they could if they were that. Uh, do the same thing. Well, if we could uh, do that, and then our Punnett square would look. So C, C, I, I, these are C's, that's a C, that's an I, that's an I. And so this would, uh, if we put C for carbonaria, these would be the adults. There, they're both carbon area, and these have got a C allele, so these would be carbon area. But this one would be our insularia. So we've got carbon area moths producing insularia, okay. If we did the same sort of thing with the typica, then you could you could also do that. Uh, kind of a tedious, tedious to draw. Notice how we're always following our golden rules of gametes have got one copy, individuals have got two copies, and again it's the same thing but just with T's there. So C C C T C T. <gasps> T T. So these will be carbon area, and this will be typica. And you could also do another one uh, with with the one remaining. Anyone losing the will to live yet? With the one remaining option, which would be with one of them being an I, one of them being a T. And what you'd get here is TI, which would be uh, insularia, and the others would be carbonaria. So you're just explaining that, and um, the main thing is assigning the genotypes to the phenotypes, so sort of explaining these are carbonaria, and then using your symbols to make sure that the information you're giving someone can recognize that you know what you're talking about there. I'm not gonna draw any more of them. A study was carried out in the middle of the 20th century, a long time ago. Um, and they noticed that in beautiful, sunny countryside Dorset, they only found Typica, the light one, and in sooty Birmingham, I was born in Birmingham, very sooty, uh, mostly carbon area, less, less Typica. 
At that time, many lichens on the bark of the trees in Birmingham had been killed by industrial pollution. And so, dark background, and so we get lots of dark moths. So imagine, imagine this background being dark. Then it's harder to see that moth there. So if you are a bird looking to eat some juicy moths, then harder to see. And likewise, the other way around in, in Dorset. So that's the story that you are going to tell here. And explain uh, the process of natural selection, different frequencies of the... Yeah, okay. So you're going to squeeze in some natural selection theory there as well and relate it to this example. So we have variation in colour and um, these are always due to mutations. So we're going to get both of these types being produced due to mutations and then um, the colour, I can't spell colour, the colour may give, can we spell camouflage, I'm going to have to copy that out, camouflage, look at that, colour may give camouflage, e.g. dark carbon area in Birmingham, okay, so these, so camouflaged, you know, give, they're, they're better, they, these are better adapted as don't get eaten. Always an advantage, not being eaten. Um, these survive, reproduce, same old story, and pass on these advantageous alleles to the next generation. And um, that will result in the frequency of that allele and indeed that type of, that phenotype of moth increasing. So will lead to increase in allele frequency and uh, that phenotype over many generations. So in marking some of these um, people have said, well, okay, being a dark colour gives gives carbon area an advantage, doesn't get eaten, but you've got to give us five marks and it wants frequencies and natural selection theory. So you've always got to look, what does it actually want, want me to give? Part C, the three types of pepper moth are classified as varieties of the same species. How is it possible to show that they belong to the same species? Two marks, an absolute gift. Uh, these can interbreed to produce fertile offspring. So it can be crossed to give fertile offspring. So a nice gift of two marks from us to you. And the last little thing to mop up, uh, over a very long time period it's possible for varieties of one species to develop into separate species. How could this happen in moths? Well, how could it happen in any example? How do we get speciation? That's what it's wanting. So, species developing into separate species. It's speciation. 
and we could have more mutations so we're getting more kind of random mutations kind of genetic drift so mutations occur then we need some sort of separation and this could be a kind of geographical um, isolation you know, allopatric different place or it could be in the same place sympatric um, behavioral difference color you know, unable to make for some reason so let's give let's give those so it could be geographical isolation which is allo patrick always stick in the words if you know them um eg you know uh, some sort of barrier a you know, mountain or you know, one one place or another so you could, you could put in a uh, if I don't know, but uh, if they don't want to cross a river or something, they're moths. They probably just fly over. So probably a bad example. Um, or we could have um, a behavioural sort of a sim Patrick same place isolation. Of different seasons or courtship displays or mechanical mismatch of reproductive parts that doesn't sound uh, much fun and eventually um, the two sort of groups that have become separated the two groups can going back to our definition of a species can no longer do what we said so can no longer interbreed to produce fertile offspring so I think you should get most of those 50 marks a bit, a bit of simple genetics telling us about natural selection so uh, hopefully you've got Quite a few of those.